it, I'm trying to think about maybe if they just look towards giving like the Rubik or like they activate the support in a different way. But again, it's more, I think it's just a drafting thing at this point. You're not leaning on the Ags now, it's just more, okay, we have the heroes, if we want to go Ags, we can. But, you know, it's a, yeah. it's a refreshing game. I... You can uh, give Rubik the Ags, and then he's going to steal Black Hole. You know? Yeah. Like, You're going to be able to hey, steal it. Saxa mean, will steal it. I got to say, I mean, Robson, the last two picks, like, they're, they're, they're true. Maybe... This well, is why I'm bringing coach on panel. Liquid's got this. Yeah. They have two coaches. And got I one think here. everybody wants Liquid to got this because that means we will get a third game to the series because they are one game down at the moment. What will happen in game two? We're going to find out together with Moxie and Purge. <laughs> well, it seems like OG is doing Alchemist 2 Electric Boogaloo here, but I'm not sure if that's going to be enough, Purge, because everyone seems very excited to see that race. Yeah, we'll see if the sequel is as good as the first uh, video. It almost never is, uh, this first movie. <laughs> that's but, not uh, true. There are some films where the second movie is even better. Terminator. Uh, that and Star Wars, hello? Empire Strikes Back? Also true. Yeah. But we'll see how it works. Um, yeah, the, the eggs, feeding an eggs to Dragonite is kind of cool. It gives them a lot of magic resistance. That part is really, really uh, excellent. Um, and then uh, free pathing, that's kind of nice too. And obviously levels up is his ulti, but yeah, I, I kind of agree with the battle. panel. Maybe Seb goes for a faster blink dagger, tries to get active, then gives eggs later on. That could be an option. Um, or they try to make um, the eggs uh, Arc Warden be really effective too. It could give them a lot of map control if they just spam spark rates around the tower. Well, Boxy is going to get caught here by the side of OG, but again, he is the Timber Saw. He hasn't opted to scale anything just yet either, so start off with that Dragon Tail. He's going to save lanes. Ooh, we're in fine form coming out here from Liquid. To be fair, OG the... will usually do the same thing right back here, so. Uh, it was incredible how well-timed that was. It was like they counted it down. They're like, okay, guys, we got to tip him at the same exact moment. Boom, four hits him. Yeah, it's all about that mental warfare here, you know? OG, they're kings of that. These are the guys that go in and they're just having fun. They're laughing. You saw the way mid one giggled when they saw that Arc Warden getting picked up. You gotta have a strong mental game too, Purge. I expect to see that in your coaching from now on too. Good. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we do have the Arc Warden here. He's gonna be duking it out with Mickey and uh, have a nice stat over there. Overwhelmingly picked on Radiant 14 times, nine and nine in. DPC, but uh, not ever picked up here at EU just yet. Yeah. Uh, we'll see if it ends up working out. Uh, lanes are going to be a bit weird to put Dragonite against Razor, which should be pretty good for Razor since he's a melee hero that you can sap damage from. Uh, Puck versus Death Prophet will be fine. No Tail not willing to trade right now, running for his life here, which is a little surprising because he's actually a way more region than he does, but he's not quite ready to fight yet. Well, he's out of the spirit siphon turn. And then okay. uh, Taiga Junkling. I feel like oh, hitting, Dragon, eh? a lot of uh, a lot of the pressure is is on you know this Arc Warden to have all that damage, right? Because you're gonna have some tanky boys coming out from the side of OG. But you know, Dragonite not really known for being able to uh, you know dish out that damage. Point. Yeah, Dragonite's damage is uh, oftentimes he's more about initiating more so than. Uh, dealing DPS. Um, they've got some upsides, I guess. I mean, Acid Spray is still going to amplify whatever damage you're dealing. Death Prophet support often does way more damage than a typical five position hero does if you keep her alive with that going. So there's there's some some damage methods that should be effective. Yeah, but we're already seeing, you know, that advantage that a Razor can have against a DK. Takes a decent chunk of that damage away from him. I have an easier time going through these hits here. It's kind of cool having the uh, the timber saw against the outlane. Nice. Like uh, BSJ pointed out in the last game, you asked to spray creep waves, and then they can't fight you in that. But timber can because he has an abnormally high amount of armor from reactive armor, so he doesn't care as much to deal with this. And having timber against all these melee cores is excellent for Boxy. It's definitely one of his better heroes, so I'm sure he's going to be able to have a, a good game here, doing the typical Orb of Venom rundown on heroes that can't trade with you. Doing a great job in this lane. He's just chasing that Saxa here. Under attack. Definitely, uh, definitely a threat in this lane for sure. Ups we already saw mid. that. 
Cops and hitting gangs here by Tiger. They throw the drags them back in, and that's going to be our first one. We're going over to the mid game. Quick ball to clean up. So it looked like Topson got a, a little aggressive on the opposite side of the map, but the Taiga moved over, got a disabled pull off, and therefore they got the easy run down. Um, our port is really slow here. Uh, I think he's like 285. Yeah, 285 without boots. Mm -hmm. So if you do get out of position, you've got a long chase. I do like the way that the Enigma's kind of bouncing around these two lanes and making sure that, you know, he can respond if yeah. they get a little bit too overzealous, which is something that, you know, OG does like to be very aggressive. We talked about this in the uh, the first game. I do like to be aggressive, yeah. So moving around can definitely help uh, win these lanes, potentially. But two kills right now for Team Liquid, they're pretty happy with their game position, especially um, if they can limit a little bit the, the overall farm of their opponents. Seb looking like he feels like he has to go leave the lane. He's probably in the stack of jungle camp. We'll see if he gets a double stack here. Probably gonna do an attack and then an acid spray. My guess here, but Taiga oh. moving over. Stack and try to farm it. So this is where things get iffy for, for offline now. Uh, we saw when 3 3 played it, AFK jungling was still pretty quick, um, especially when you get Grievous Greed and skip Unstable Concoction and getting a Mud Golem camp stack. It's a lot of summons, but you know, this it, he's not going to get the axe nearly as fast as he most likely mm -hmm. with this uh, lane setup. Is that going to end? I mean, we've talked about this before the fact that you know, in game number one, mid one won the lane handedly, and then also, you know, the alchemist had a great time. Is that going to automatically set them off as a detriment? It absolutely should, yeah, because the axe can come later. Uh, look at the other lanes, Topson got killed mid. Um, his net worth or his last assists are still good. He's sitting at 24 and he's gonna go Midas still Radiant's fine, but top tower I mean, is look, under Quick was just in the top lane. He's just killed, uh, down no tail. Twice now. Exactly, like he's got boots already. His, he basically so... knows that he can win this lane. Middle one can't outfrass him because it's a Dragon Knight. So like, having Razor in this circumstance, they, they pick, pick, just pick basically two side lane cores that are just really good at fighting. And the dive on here in the bottom lane for Soxa. No tail is gonna join in. Boxy does have those uh, mangoes if necessary. He's gonna timber chain. He's still chasing after Soxa here. He's going deep oh, into these hurt. woods. This is not looking super great here for Soxa. As Boxy just slowly just a rusty saw to the face. Not the way you want to go down as Mickey and Insania over in the mid lane trying to make the plays on tops and trying to get this kill. Are they going to be able to do it? Yes, they are. As Mickey, the final hit. You guys, offlane Alchemist is terrible, clearly. <laughs> and that is why they're losing. No, but basically Liquid just identified that they said like they're going to try to do the same Kraptos again and then they just picked the right heroes. So they got two side lane cores that win their matchups pretty convincingly. They happen to get them in matchups that are very good. Having Timbersaw versus Alk is perfect. Is Having Razor attack. versus an offlane DK is perfect. And they happen to kill Tops in the mid lane. Now twice, they've, they're winning three lanes. This is like a massive advantage for Liquid. Koif is just Radiant's really enjoying sapping all of attack. that damage there from mid one. Chases him down. Looks like they're trying to make some plays over here on Mickey, but you know, uh, what are you going to do with a Death Prophet 5? You've got some nice silence, Radiant yes, scale. but it's, it's, it's a lot more difficult, right, than compared to what they have going on on the side of Liquid. Sandy struggling for, for gold and attack. levels because of the fact that he's died twice in lane now. Just picking up a magic stick and a raindrop, it'll help him survive burst, but having a boots at this position would feel a lot better. But either way, Void Spirit hitting six, like, yeah, you're, you're not going to be able to kill him. The best thing you can do now is just sit behind him and, and be ready for the dive when it comes, because Mickey is definitely Radiant's thinking about it with that DD. Tower is under attack. You can see the way that the sports are playing. They do spot out uh, Taiga, though, over here. So we'll be able to force him out Radiant's of the jungle. The tower, tower goes down. Fallen. Foxy taking it around uh, a little bit before seven minutes. Very. Not, not even not even sacrificing himself much here. He will get gone on, but it's a long chase. He's got boots. His opponents are half, half booted here. Oh, Boxy chasing Radiant's after Saxa again. He has just been bullying this poor Rubik on and off nonstop. Down he goes. Although it does look like they're trying to make some plays. Mickey though with the double damage, he's sitting very low, has to be careful, he's taking a lot. Radiant's not quite gonna be enough, that Crips from not strong enough either, as Mickey 70 something hit point. Gonna be able to walk away, the Chaka is doing a lot of damage. Mickey, he's just tossing back and forth within here. Is he finally gonna get punished? Oh no, he's God. not, no tail now, looking like he's gonna be in trouble. Set next to fall. If they get one more head off, and by God, they will. Not looking good for OG, guys. Uh, that's a big loss of heroes here. They almost got Mickey, but he just min-maxes it there and stays alive. I'm sure any Liquid fan is really excited right now. That is so big. Look here it is again. 
Mickey in trouble, not looking so good. Gets the double jump, all three tops, and Insania blocks him about three times in a row. Really nice move there by Liquid to throw the game briefly, but it couldn't stop him. Mickey gets a ton of shield right there, and No-Tail only having level one nuke really cost him there. If No-Tail's level four, 100% he dies. I think he went down to 42 hit points during that whole thing and still was able to walk away. That almost looked like he's just gonna yawn. <laughs> I will say, oh. Yeah, Boxy is just a big threat right now. There's not a whole heck of a lot that they really can do against the Timber with their lineup at this time. He's such a good player playing from ahead. Like, it's one of his greatest strengths, I think, as an offlane player, mm -hmm. that if he does get these, like, hero matchup advantages, he knows where to go. He knows how to be aggressive. Like, just getting Thompson's HP to half is massive because now Thompson is not going to want to play aggressive anytime soon here. Radiance and he's also shifted from the attack. lane that was easy to kill, the safe lane tower, and he instantly goes mid. And basically Dyer's his whole team can ignore him, fortified. knowing that he's ahead, yeah. knowing that he can also pressure heroes. Instead, he's now going to rotate top, because that's where OG's pressuring. He yeah. just wants to go Dyer's everywhere that's going to make it inconvenient for OG attack. to play Dota. Spirit timing coming out from No-Tail, and Sania standing nearby. No six yet, No-Tail looks like he's gonna fall. Regen's a decent amount, but... And over on the bottom lane, Sox is just getting chased by Mickey this entire time. They're just rotating just dancing all the back Okay, maybe they, they get a kill on Taiga. <laughs> Taiga's super farm, though. He's already got Necro 1, and he's a four-position hero, by the way. He's been jungling. His net worth is slightly higher than Arc Wardens. It's almost the same as Dragonite's. And everybody else on Liquid side is massively ahead. So this is still looking excellent for Liquid. Oh, They're crap. basically just... Okay, they don't have anything to interrupt that TP. So he's going to be able to teleport out, no attack. problem. But definitely got very low with Boxy just yo-yoing of death back and forth there. Auto I assume soon pressure and two they'll, commit, they'll commit Radiance to this tower now. Tower I assume they've got Necro 1 in uh, about 17 seconds here. Mm -hmm. And they've got smokes ready on Enigma too. They could try to smoke around. They're just going to play it safe. They don't need to, like, smoke and hard commit for these engagements. They catch the observer board there. That's huge. It's going to make it even harder for OG to defend because they're not going to necessarily know exactly where the yeah. heroes are. Radiance so middle tower for now, Boxy does attack. it solo. Quakefoot going to retreat Radiance from top. Are fortified. And Sox is still trying to catch up a net worth on the bot lane. But Senior will get to here as well. So just really easy pressure mid. No tell might die in the mid lane. Looking dead. Yeah, he's getting chased here by Boxy. Just a couple of clicks. And eventually down goes No Tail. The loose top into the top lane, though. But no, oh, the black hole coming in from Taiga Koifa. Gonna be able to just hide them left and right. They get the kill on step. Mid one is left all alone. They have the double damage on Mickey. It's gonna be Taiga who claims up. A disaster for OG. The, uh, Bottom lane, liquid. they're gonna go right after Sox if he just wanted levels, guys. No, triple it's a double, kill. or sorry, a triple Radiant kill for Mickey. The, the amount of Dyer's map control and like efficiency they're getting on the map is insane. Taiga TP mid, he summoned uh, his Eidolons, he spawned his Necro, and they destroyed mid while Timber is killing the support that tries to defend it. And in the meantime, I'm like, oh, the tower's dead. Then I look top, boom, black hole. So he puts all of his summons mid. He doesn't even need to be top to participate in that fight. And they're, they're just consistently winning all lanes. This is like the most winning three lanes crap I've seen and <laughs> maybe all DPC. Because it's not like they just won the laning stage. It's like they are constantly winning three oh, lanes, top. no matter where they go. Right into Boxy, right into Taiga. Mickey's coming in hot with that eighth the remnant, and Boxy gets himself yet another kill. They are indeed dead. Koifa has just beat up his eggs. Koifa has not left his lane. I'm pretty sure he's just been allowed to do pretty much anything. He did okay. He did rotate once at one point. But look at these TPs coming out immediately. Koifa, he's so fast with Sadia. Waning rip coming forward here. Doesn't have the dream coil for another 12 seconds. Taiga getting into position does not have black hole, but of course we'll go drop that midnight pulse. Does a decent amount of damage. Is now step isolated from the rest of his team. Koifa's just dancing around here. He's walking his alchemist over here, and he's gonna be able to. No, he does get stunned up. One more hit will do the trick, and down goes Seb. It's not looking great for mid one either, as he's. Just get blinked away by Puck. Oh, Puck's okay. over in the uh, corner. They're just getting steamrolled here. Guys, Puck is a higher level than Dragonite is right now. That's a five position four. This is not Dyer's good. Top top. In the slightest. Down. He did get his Midas off, though. You know, efficiency. Good, good for him. And then he Midas Razor by dying. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Mickey is on the hunt, and they will not Vision only take down the Tempest double up top, but they'll take down the original copy. And this one, his hand Midas is not. Radiance top tower has fallen. 
passive. I Maybe think the middle tower is yeah. under attack. I think the strategy is that you really effectively dismantled this. Like, uh, I think what was kind of crucial about OG last game was that Radiance Monkey King tower has an X pickup really effective right but monkey king also is a lane winner right and that's what's crucial here their 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 ags potential heroes here are not like crazy lane winners and they're not as flexible as a monkey king is so og just had the better draft for the strategy in game one game two heavily punished by liquid's reaction picks. oh dear Soxa already just gets drawn right back in the goal they use the exorcism but they're just not doing much damage over here as boxy of course can just go timber chain away the ghost are doing a decent amount though are they finally going to be able to take down boxy yes they do Back in again, Koifa dancing around. No tail, still chasing after Dream Quad coming up over onto the back line. So they go, they take down mid one. And now No Tail trying to just get as much damage with these ghost ladies as possible. So he doesn't do it down, but he does fall. And now Seth getting chased behind the tier two. The GG gets called. OG, they've had enough. As Liquid figures it out, Nikki gets a rampage. And uh, this is, you know, one of the strengths Liquid. of Liquid, I feel, is that they're very quick on the uptake merge. Really, they're, they equalized it out. They made the they made the strat look bad, and that is that is the weakness of offlane now, right there. If you. Can